Let me tell you my daughter's secret. Maybe you can employ it. Every time my daughter sees me, one kind word or the other, Daddy, I collapse. I love you, Daddy. My next question is, what do you want? <laughs> now, she didn't come saying, I want something. No. She just came expressing how much she loves me. And just by what she said, I was willing to do anything. Some of you wives, if only you will learn some secrets. There are some things your husband will do for you without asking. When your husband say, lie down, lie down. <laughs> I'm not saying when they tell you to do something foolish. When your husband say, lie down, lie down, sit down, sit down, keep quiet, keep quiet. They will write you a check that will shock your nose. <laughs> no, I'm here to I'm here to see my wife asked me something and me delay in answering. I'm yet to do it. Now that's a human being. Oh. How much more the heartbeat of God, which is people? Look, we need to change the, look. Definition of love for God is love for people. This is simple. Equation. Anytime you hold somebody's hand and introduce them to God and bring them to church, God is so happy. He said, what can I do? Look at what God did about Abraham. The moment the boy sacrificed his son because God said, bring him to me. God said, hey, heaven, stop, stop, stop. I've never found any man on the planet who have ever given me his child. Ah, hey, in blessing, angels keep quiet. Let me pronounce blessing on this boy. Ah! Solomon came to church, and because of people, and God's house, he gave a thousand burnt offering. God had not seen before. He said, Solomon, what do you want? This offering that you have given, tell me what you want. Solomon said, I want wisdom. He said, Abba, only wisdom. I will give you money too. You see, get it. How passionate are you for God? Stop asking and start giving. Give people. I'm sure pastor is asking it just because he wants the house to be full. No. He wants his house filled with people. If some of you are not clapping, there's a serious disease hanging around under your chair. Every gift of yours must be used to glorify God and to get people into the kingdom. Every gift must be used, utilized. To expand this kingdom. That's the passion. That's the passion. Watch this. Lovers introduce their lovers to their friends without coercion, force, or being asked. How many? How much? How many minutes? Or have you set aside to pray for your church or your pastor every day? Now, watch this. Very serious. How many of you have got doctors? Doctor, doctors, GP. <clears throat> How many of you want your GP to die tomorrow? Why? When you go there, it tells you what's wrong with your body. So, even when you don't pray for your doctor, you wish him well. Now, your pastor stands in front of you every Sunday. Hearing from God to tell you what you need to do to enhance your life. When was the last time you prayed for your pastor to speak from God? You know, one of the reasons why I stopped when we are doing appreciation day here, one of the stop people come and stand here and say, uh, oh, Mama B, like today, it's your birthday. We just want the women's department and the men's department have come together and just have to express how much we love you. <laughs> Now, all those who did, <laughs> are nowhere here. Nowhere in the church. Amale song. So, whatever you want to give him, you just come quietly and give it to him. Don't make any public. <laughs> all that asthma, asthma. It's all hypocrisy. <laughs> so, we don't do them things anymore. No, no, no. We don't do them. You got something for me? Give me private and say, the Lord spoke to me, or whatever you will say. Just give it to me and go and sit down. Let me bless you. Guys. We'll... 
<laughs> we even feel like crying. <laughs> you are lying. Stop it. Stop it. In Luke chapter 7, 1 to 10, a man of God, a man came to ask for healing for his daughter. And then, Luke said, you need to make time to read it because of time. I can't go. But I've titled that scripture, Justify Your Healing. The man came and said, actually, let's look at it. Luke, Luke chapter 7, please. There are some things when you're going to ask God for, please look at your mouth. Look at what you have done for God before you open your mouth to ask for those things. From now, from once you live here, bam, on the bus, on the train, in your neighborhood, start doing prayer work in your neighborhood for everybody on your streets to be saved. For their businesses to try. Walk on prayer streets, on the streets of Croydon, and say, Lord, bless this business. Bless that business. You, in the peace of your city, you shall have peace. You see, David said... Um, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that love thee. How can you pray for a city you don't love? How can you pray for a people you hate? Every, there's an advert that comes on my TV every time I wish I can call the people and say, don't do that advert again. They say, since in this economic crime, we are all suffering. I say, speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Don't say that on my TV. But I'm not suffering. But I know what to do and I'm doing it so I'm not suffering. But the reality of it is many people are suffering. Now, you have the answers. You get them in church every Sunday. Who has heard about tithe and offering from your hand? Who has heard about how to have all your needs met? Who, who have you taught the message I preach here? Who have you taught it to? Who? Your workmates who you see come to church deep, come to work depressed. Who have you said, go to the corner, let me lay hands on you. If they say, don't do it publicly, you can hide in a corner and pray. Or you can pray in the spirit without anybody knowing. Whose life have you affected since your life was affected by your church? If this church was not doing you good, you wouldn't be sitting here. You come here because you are always added to. Now God's concern is, what are you adding back after he adds to you? That's everybody's responsibility from now. He's not excited in heaven. No. It must be a concern to you that when you are coming to church and there's nobody following you, it must be a concern to you that even when you hit this place, you go on your knees and start praying, Lord, please. Hey, please. Anytime you pass by a pub, you should pray, Lord, save these drunkards. Anytime you pass by Soho, you pray. Don't pass by. Pray by. You see single people struggling with fornication. You pray them through and give, buy the CD and give it to them and help them overcome it. Not criticize them. Do you love prostitutes? Do you love homosexuals? Do you love lesbians? They are coming here very soon. As soon as they come here, you embrace them, shower them with love and tell them I used to be one. And God changed me. This is the way he changed me. Then you begin to teach. You don't need microphone. You begin to teach them, nurture them, visit them, call them. That is demonstration of love for God. Stop talking, making noise. Jane. The meaning of the word Joseph throughout the whole of scripture, the meaning of the word Joseph is addition. When Joseph was born, the meaning of his name is what? Addition. So when you look through all the Bible, the three main Josephs in the Bible, all of them did addition. They added. Joseph added to a nation. Joseph, that's Joseph in Genesis. Joseph of Arimathea added by giving his tomb to Jesus. And there's another Joseph who added, who took care of Jesus. Uh, Joseph, Mary's husband, Jesus' stepfather. He added to Jesus' life. All Josephs are additions. We are all supposed to be additions. And even Joseph, in, a prison, in Potiphar's house, he added to Potiphar's house. In prison, he added. And guess what? When he added to Potiphar's house, despite being sold into slavery. 
So things doesn't have to be good around you before you introduce somebody to Jesus. He even in slavery, he added to Potiphar's house. In prison, added. And then the person he added to Butler. You see, many of you, you need somebody's recommendation. Somebody whom you bless today is the one that will recommend you to Pharaoh later. Who have you blessed? Who have you added to? Who must tell Pharaoh about you? Who have you added to? Who? Addition is not free. Lord, add to me. Add to me. Add to me. You see, many Christians, God just, many Christians to God, they are Mr. Bean. They are comedians. Here they are. Lord, multiply me. Lord, Psalm 115, verse 14. And you're quoting scriptures to God. He said, you shall increase us. More, more, and more. And then God is softly trying to tell you something. But you are shouting. He can't, you can't hear him. He said, when you add to my work. But you are praying. I rebuke that voice. I rebuke. Kaya. Kaya. 